initial idea to an operational bankable plant and he will uh, give information about biogas <coughs> and biomass projects uh, in Romania as well. So the floor is yours. So instead of uh, 15 minutes, I think 10 minutes will be enough and five minutes for discussion. Anyway. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I will talk in English also for our guests from abroad or for PC Limba Romuna Dakabets Interval who can discuss at Dupa. My name is Elias Papagiorgiadis. I'm the president of the Romanian Association of Biogas and Biomass. In Romania, all this sector was not developed until now. As you heard, Mr. Kovac, which is one of the best in Europe in this sector of biogas, Romania is <coughs> at the last positions. This is a problem. But this is also an opportunity. We see it as an opportunity. We don't see it as a problem. Why did it happen so far? Due to several reasons, but mainly because there was no one who was involved and responsible to spend his time and to try to resolve problems. It's not that Romania cannot. Romania can and will prove that. So, if you ask me with all due respect, in 2020, Romania will have triple the figure that you have there. And I will explain to you why. So, uh, we started, our bio was initiated in 2012. And we have already getting co got in contact, and we are, at least this is what the gentleman for me, but told us that we will become members in the following month. And also, we have become members of the IBOM, the European Association of Biomass. Why do we have one association for everything? Because we have here biogas, we have biomass, we have biomethane, uh, we have anaerobic digestion, we have waste to energy, and more. The main issue is that in Romania, usually we lose ourselves trying to have too many small pieces in order for each of us to be president. But this does not give us power. The problems of all these sectors in Romania are exactly the same. We have one approach by the government. They give the same parameters and the same feeding tariff or the same income. This is why we consider that it's better to have a common approach to combine forces and to be stronger. So, biogas and anaerobic digestion in Romania is, those, is not just another source of renewable energy. Uh, right now, there is a very big discussion in Romania what we will do with the renewables and how good is it to pay for that and not pay and so on. But biogas, biomass, is not photovoltaic, is not wind with all due, due respect to them as well. It's completely different. Let's start with the positive effects. Biogas creates jobs, full stop. The other technologies do not. For biogas, you need tens of different people. Mr. Kovac showed you that in Germany, you have 60,000 people working in a sector. And trust me, they are not paid with a minimum salary. You need from workers to all kinds of experts. You need all kinds of technology to use. You need people who will be trained. This is added value. And these are people who get very good salaries because they have scientific expertise. Also, biogas cleans up the environment. You said, you mentioned slaughterhouse. What is going on today in countries like Romania with slaughterhouse? Waste, we don't want to know. So, the best way to resolve problems of environment, there are many solutions. The best is to transform them into energy, into money, cleaning up the environment without polluting, without destroying the life of people, and making money out of this, and without paying money to bury them somewhere.
So biogas transforms a problem into an advantage. If we talk about companies, because there are too many different companies who can apply, who can have biogas in their uh, investment plan and anaerobic digestion. So mainly this goes to companies that produce alimenta, produce food industry. They have all kinds of waste. And this so far, most of them in Romania are paying someone to remove it. This means that they have higher cost other, and also they have all these kinds of bureaucrats who go to them and they are ch searching to find problems to, penal to make penalties and to pay money for that. Instead, by transforming all this waste into energy, they save money, they finish with bureaucracy, they make, they earn money and they become more competitive. Mr. Kovacs told you that you have almost half of European biogas in Germany. It's not by coincidence that there are many products produced in Germany, and, de and apart, sorry, despite the fact that German salaries are very high, the cost is lower because they save money from all kinds of other sources, and they have bigger profit that allows them to, to be more competitive. This is the idea that biogas is important for a country like Romania. <coughs> biogas influences thousands of companies, thousands. It's not wind for 20, 50, 100 players. Biogas is also for 50, 20, 100 kilowatts small projects that in a small city that is a, a, a small milk factory, okay, that today if they don't have a solution they will find a way to somewhere throw the residues to the environment. I will tell you this happens to other counties, never in Romania. Instead of that, with biogas, they have a solution, they stop polluting the environment, this is better for everyone, they hire people, they get more competitive, they can be stronger. This changes life of people locally. It's not just an investment of someone who puts his money there, thank you very much, la revedere. Cities are also to be involved because we have the waste to energy and also biogas from waste. So this means that instead of all kinds of problems that we have today, we can transform again the waste into energy, getting income and also having a much better environment. Biogas, wherever has been applied, produces advantages for everyone. And it's not just an investment for huge investors. The bi biogas, you hear a lot of stuff about the national grid in Romania or other countries and the problems and so on. And what is going on with unstable forms of energy. Because now it's producing, after 10 minutes it's not. Biogas, biomass, is a different story. It's completely stable energy, 99%. You have 8,000 hours per year. This is stability. And all around Europe, all around the world, they are searching for this kind of energy in order to stabilize their grid. Because if you have too many unstable units, you have to pay a lot of money to stabilize them. And instead of paying money, it's better to have a biogas plant or a biomass plant, and they, it will do the job. And this will also save money from the national budget to stabilize energy. One of the reasons, for example, that the Greek grid has collapsed and the Greek government is desperate is because Greek government has, the Greek national company has to pay about 300 million euro per year to balance the network, which is huge. Also, biogas, if you combine it with buildings, with factories, with companies, it leads to energy efficiency, which is one of the targets of Europe and Romania until 2020, to have, let's say, green buildings, all the buildings to have something green. But apart from that, it means that you have independence towards all kinds of problems. You have your own energy. If something goes wrong, you plug in and you can still be there. Biogas increases scientific knowledge. We will work together very closely with the European Biogas Association, but also with the universities in Romania, and also with all associations of experts. Biogas is constantly changing. 
We don't know that yet in Romania because we didn't start. But biogas is something like the computers. Every week, every month, there's something new. New ideas, new technologies. This is knowledge coming non-stop. And due to the fact that Romania has an experience and has a great past in this sector, we are positive that we will be able to have, in a few years' time, our own experts who will be useful not only here but everywhere else. Plus, it involves tens of different professions, from lawyers to, I don't know, what kind of experts. Almost everyone has something to do with a plant. It's a plant, it's a factory, and a complicated one. So, biogas adds stable growth to the gross domestic product, to PIB of the country, because it's not a situation that today you do something, tomorrow you go. It's an investment for many years' time. The investors need years to get their money back. They invest, and it's a long-term investment. Countries need this kind of investment. It's not a speculative investment. You don't come today and you build it in two weeks and you are producing. You need months or more than a year for that. One second, please, before. And also, biogas is a factor that makes a country more attractive for foreign direct investments, in especially in the food industry. So if, you have, if there is a big company, multinational, that wants to choose between three, four different countries to invest in a big plant for food, one of the questions, top five, top ten, you choose, is what is the subvention scheme for biogas because I don't want to pay money for my waste, I don't want to pollute the environment, I want to earn out of this. And this is something which Romania, if we work and we really change the things, can benefit out of that because Romania has many advantages why people to come here for investment. So if biogas is so great, then why is it so undeveloped so far in Romania? First of all, biogas so far was not a bankable project. Bankable, bankable means that the banks do not understand it, do not invest in it, do not trust it. And what does this mean? This means that if you have a biogas project in Germany, you go to the bank and you say, this is my project, these are my papers, these are my contracts, I will invest 100 euro, I want 70% by you, 60, 80, you choose the figure, and I come with a difference. In Romania, so far, the discussion is, I have a project, good luck. I have a project, congratulations. I have a project, next one, please. And the very few projects that have been implemented, biogas or biomass, they were based on corporate financing which means that the company in total, it has to be a big one, guarantees for the money they take to use for biogas. Is this healthy? No. Is this <coughs> improving things? No. So, one reason was this. Second reason is that there is not enough predictability, lack of planning and financing. In Romania, usually, predictability is not the strongest point of the country. And uh, this means, I give an example. I have spoken to lots of people who are developing projects of biogas. And you ask them, okay, you want someone to finance you in order to build a plant, bravo. And where, what is your materia prima, your raw material? I have a contract for a year. What do you do next year? We will see, there are many in the area. But the bank does not understand, we will see. That's a forbidden word. What will be the price? We don't know. We will see. This is year like this. Next year we will see. And if I don't find this, I will use other residues. I have also a farm that, yes, but the technology is built based on specific ingredients. You cannot have any kind, you cannot change every week the raw materials. So, this is lack of education in the sector of biogas. And the lack of predictability leads to planning, lack of or planning and financing. The know-how is very poor. This is why we didn't start yet. 
And what is it going on? We have lack of proper developments and critical decisions. So if someone wants to develop a project, he has to ask experts like Mr. Kovacs. He has to ask experts like someone who will tell him one, two, three, four, five. So far, the idea is that someone who used to apply for European grants and he has a friend in Germany who worked once in a biogas company, this guy will tell him what to do. But there are two different things. One thing is what a company wants to sell, and one thing is what you need, and how this can be combined, if they can be combined. Because if you make something that is not working, you will lose your money, and the most important of all, you will consider and the whole area will say, our uh, biogas is not working. So the developments were not properly done so far. This reminds me of the same situation like photovoltaic. So if you see the first developments of photovoltaic in 2008, 2009, <coughs> compared to what you do today, it's like the day and the night because they didn't know. Right now, we are somewhere in gray area, and now we start to know also in Romania, and we will know much more in the following period, how to develop. There are several illegal issues and are clear areas. So, we are talking about lands, how to list them, how to resolve so many different things. Okay, how do you sign this contract for someone to give you his waste? What kind of contract is that? How many people know this in Romania? Less than 10. All these create problems to investors and uncertainty. And all this <laughs> go back to the first, that the bank sees all this and does not finance. These problems are not necessarily created due to some kind of Romanian problem, the politicians, etc. So far, there was no one to work so as to resolve them. We love crying in this part of the world. Yesterday, someone was telling me that 20 years ago, I didn't expect that we will do only this. I was expected to do much more, and so on. And when I described to him and asked him his situation 20 years ago, and his situation today, that was 1,000 times better today than 20 years ago, I told him, can you find me many countries in the world that a citizen improved in 20 years that much? He started smiling. We love crying, we love complaining. Yes, there are millions of problems in Romania. If we start talking, we will finish tomorrow morning. But still, the majority of these problems regarding biogas are based on the fact that so far there was no one to work for them. Because, for example, if an array, the national authority, if no one goes to tell them, hello, what are you doing with biogas, let's talk, hey, it's normal that they will decide by themselves. So it's not the country that is to blame. We are the ALBIO, the Romanian Association of Biomass and Biogas. We were founded last year. We already said about our legitimization in European level. And what are our priorities? Because it's not only the intention, you have to do something, you know, not just to have the title and the stamp. First of all is we have to work together with the authorities for the additional green certificate. For big projects over 2 megawatts, <coughs> initially, European Union and Romania, have agreed, European Commission, sorry, and Romania, have agreed on the following scheme. Two plus one plus one certificate, in total four. So far, there are only three granted, two plus one. And the fourth one was not granted because there has to be a work done. Can you Please. explain what is two plus one plus one? Yes, two green certificates is the basic scheme. So in case you have one megawatt hour production, you get two green certificates plus the energy that you can sell. Additional green certificate is, has to do with things like using a special energy crop or collecting the residues from the forests and so on. No, no. Another option also is the cogeneration for worms, having energy and warmth. So, so far, even if you do all of them, even if you have the cogeneration, even if you have, you collect everything from the forest, even if you do whatever is necessary, you will still get the three of them. Because there is some job to be made, some work to be done, some analysis, some plans, and some stuff to be deposited to European Commission to justify the fourth certificate. So this is our first priority. Second, 
to resolve basic structural issues of the sector. <coughs> who is who? Who is doing what? How is he doing it? Not everyone is able to do everything. Biogas is not photovoltaic. That today, tomorrow morning, I wake up and I say, hello, my name is Elias Papayogas and I'm a top expert in photovoltaic. You cannot do that in biogas. So we need to structure the industry. Organize the, mar the market, create structures and models that will be easy for, for people to follow. There are some basic contracts, there are some basic agreements that have to be made in order for someone who is a serious, a real investor to be able to have his pre-feasibility study with a real expert and then to have the, his contract made by professionals in order to have also then agreements with the off-takers, with the companies that will buy you the green certificates and with all this together to go to the bank that the bank will also be prepared after we explain to the bank what it's all about and then to get financing and then to change the whole, the whole scenario. Also, we will add to predictability. With all that I'm saying to you is that we want to make this business predictable, not depending on I don't know what. And something that I have not written, we want to work for the idea, to promote the idea of contractual agriculture. So it's very nice. We always say we want to be Kaluma like the rest of the world. And we see the rest of the world, but we don't want to follow some basic ideas. For example, if you want to have production and you want every year a different price, this is good because some years you are up, some years you are down. Are you bankable? Can you do other big investments with that? Very few huge companies. The vast majority of farmers remain out of the game. What do they do in other counties? They sign long-term contracts. This means that while the price is like that, you get a stable increasing price and you can predict for the following years your income and your profit. Of course, in a super year, you will not benefit, but also you are protected from the bad year. So, like this, the farmer is transformed to a business person that has a predictable business and he can organize his life. And biogas also can have the raw materials in order to predict the future as well. We will work together with the authorities, the banks and our members, so as to transform biogas and bio biomass, as I told you, into bankable investments. We want to categorize energy crops and also to categorize all kinds of raw materials. This is something that is very difficult, but we need to understand it, because if we don't do that, every lovely, serious person will come and say, I have the best plant that NASA told me is giving you one billion tons per year. And someone will believe him because he will say, I, I sell it very cheap. So, working together with experts in European level, we don't know a lot. We, are don't, we don't come to say that we know everything. On the contrary, we want to work with other countries, we want to work with our association in European level, with the ones who know, in order together to learn and to give to people knowledge. So, we want to categorize all kinds of raw material. Like this, people and potential investors will be able to assess the information and to understand what it's all about. Also, we want to explain the technologies, different technologies, complicated technologies. People must be able to understand them. Otherwise, they will not be able to invest. And if, the people, don't, and if people do not understand, also the banks don't understand, so they will not finance. Offer valuable data necessary for any investor. There are things that people need to know and they cannot find the information somewhere. We need to collect this. Plus, organize site visit in Romania and abroad. We have to learn from the others who have success. Avoid mistakes. And the few plants that are already in Romania, we have to visit them to create relations because the more people that enter in this industry, the stronger it becomes. It's not a competition. Because anyway, we don't expect to have thousands of megawatts in this business. <coughs> Trade missions from <coughs> to countries which are more advanced. We already started discussions with two of them. We want to explore this because, again, we will go to see. We will invite them here to tell us. 
spread the message all around Romania. This will not be something that we will do it only in Bucharest, in an office there, inviting everyone who wants to do the business to come to our office. <laughs> I am today in Arad. We will have inauguration in Bucharest, in Timisoara, in Cluj, most probably also in Craiova, in Iras, in Constanta, in Brasov. <coughs> this is not why we have, I don't know what kind of idea that we like traveling. We need to go where people are, and we need to understand also special conditions in every different area. So this is one more of our priorities. And the last one, we want to bring in contact all involved parties and establish proper communication between them. Only through communication we can go to the result. What is the result? Our target is at least 50 major and 250 minor installations until 2016. <coughs> a major for us means over 500 kilowatts, minor is less than 500 kilowatts. So, it might sound to you nothing compared to the thousands of projects, etc., etc., but for every one installation that you see here, count tens of jobs created. For every one installation, count a much cleaner environment in the area. So imagine 250 or 300 areas in Romania with cleaner environment, <laughs> local environment, and also tens of jobs created. Jobs that will stay, will not go. Because you cannot bring, I don't know, people from Africa to run your factory. You will use the locals because they will have the expertise, they will be trained long-term perspective. As I told you, in June 2013, we will have the inauguration event in Bucharest, and in autumn, we'll go to Timisoara, Cluj, and Mall. And we would like to, first of all, thank you for listening all this. We would like to invite you to join us today and add value to your ideas and transform them into backable investment. There are too many people out there having ideas and good ones regarding biogas, regarding biomass, regarding cogeneration. And these people usually remain alone, they go right, they go left, nobody tells them nothing, they get disappointed, they go to a bank, they tell them nothing can happen, no. We suggest you to join us and all together we will work in order to transform your ideas into a bankable investment. Thank you very much for your time. <coughs> But you know, here in the Banat Plain, if you have visited 40 years ago, the farmers, almost each one had a small biogas uh, plant. Also, the University of Bucharest in Dimishara, in Arad, we are teaching about biogas production and so on. Of course, in a modality that uh, uh, practical work is not so sustained by uh, uh, in, in Romania. But really, to say that in Romania we don't have specialists, it is not uh, really the good point. We don't have a good organization, we don't have a, a good politics, applied politics. But uh, finally, still we have good people. Uh, this is my, say, my opinion. I didn't say that we don't have good, uh, good people. I say on no, the contrary. A lack of specialists. No. The, uh, okay. Right no, no, now, no, 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 allow no me. Problem. Allow me, please, you said something. No. So, you know, we are we are coming late. We fully agree, yes. but you said something, yes. and I would like please to explain again. In Romania today, if you want to start a biogas project, you will not find many people to give you practical solutions on your problem. I know very well, and I respect, and I already told you that we will work with the universities because there is scientific knowledge there, but. We have to use this knowledge into practical, real situations. Today in Romania, there are very few plants. And one of our targets is to take all this knowledge that is in the universities, and if we combine it with the real situation, to create many more specialists. Right now, in the universities, you give the basics, and we have to build on that. I didn't say that we don't have no one good here, but for sure, if we have 200 installations in Romania, 
the number of people who will know the business in reality, in practice, will be thousands compared to the ones that are today. This is my approach. Okay. okay? Learning by doing. Thank you. Yes. But you know, we have still in the universities uh, pilots plan, pilot plans, small lab facilities. Uh, I know. You are invited to visit them. We have patents. Yes. I don't know if you know. And about exactly them. this this is the point. The yes. patents that you have and the labs that you have, we have to take them out of the university and to come with business projects and to use your experience and to get you involved in order to make projects. To, you are free to visit us. It's not about me to visit, it's about members who want to do the business. Because your knowledge mm -hmm. has to be spread. Otherwise, why do you have it, correct? So you think that we don't have biogas and biomass projects? I said that uh, there are projects today, but there are few. And I said that we have a target for 50 more in the next 50 big ones and 250 small ones. And who will finance them? Banks, after we make them bankable. Because right now they are not bankable. And I explain to you why they are not bankable. I'll give you a simple example. You go and you say... Are there any other... Uh, allow me to say on this something. There is a guy who says I want to have a biogas project. And I, and I know I spoke to people. I went to Germany, to this company, to Italy, to that company. Everything is perfect. Bravo. What happens with the land? I spoke to some friends he has, he will give me, etc. In order for a project to be bankable, you have to present a contract, a contract, not a friend, a contract for at least 15 years' time that you have a land that is blocked or that you have a factory, I don't know what else, that will guarantee by contract that will provide you the raw materials. So. The things that you have worked in the university, we have to see where can we find them out of the university in order for them to create projects based on the experience that there is in the university and to make them bankable. From the banks, we get the money. Okay, I think the okay. audience is clever enough to uh, understand all what you okay. intend to uh, speak about. So are there any other questions? I have a different kind of question. Uh, in most uh, countries, there is a state subsidy for green energy production. Uh, but all over Europe, uh, the best and most widespread uh, scheme is the feed-in tariff, uh, except for Romania and Poland, as far as I know. Uh, what is the benefit, in your view, uh, for the green certificate, uh, which doesn't seem to work as well as the feeding tariff? Uh, very correct question. In Romania, the government has announced, actually ANRE has announced that they will work on a feeding tariff for projects less than 2 megawatts. So, projects less than 2 megawatts will benefit from feeding tariff. We are expecting, and we started talking to the authorities, in order to see, we are expecting this to come up in the following months where we'll have a fixed price. Because by having the fixed price, automatically, the smaller projects resolve 50% of the issue how to become bankable. The bank can predict an income, okay? Regarding the bigger projects, the idea with the green certificates is that this is something that is supported by the people and not by the government, so there is not additional cost to the national budget. I am not here to tell you that I agree or I don't agree. This is something that it happens already. So. I'm the last one who will tell about this, but this is the fact, and we are working on this. Based on this, there were 2,000 megawatts of wind installed, and 100 megawatts of solar that most probably this year will be 500. So it seems to work for wind and solar. For big projects of biomass in Romania, it's also working, because I know, situ I know projects with are, which are big, and the return on investment is amazing based on the green certificates. Plus, due to the fact that uh, uh, wind and solar are unstable energies and the traders accept it, but they need to balance it somehow. They give very good prices to the biomass and biogas producers exactly because they need to balance some, somehow. But again, we are expecting in the following months feeding tariff for projects less than 2 megawatts. Another question? Yes. Uh, 
question. Um, I'm the German Chamber of Commerce in Romania, and I have a question concerning your uh, association. We are very glad that uh, we have now an association for biogas and uh, biomass. I was wondering, uh, was the creation of the association an um, initiative of um, Romanian companies, or of more Romanian companies, or rather um, foreign companies with interest in Romania? So, or who are the members of uh, Adipo now? I am Greek. And I'm in Romania since 2004. Okay. And uh, I have bought in Romania more than 500 million euro investments, starting from real estate, and now in renewable energy. You, how do you call me? For a Romanian company or for a company? <laughs> well, I'm paying the taxes in Romania. <laughs> I, I know you, but I was wondering about the members no, of the The initiative is the following. Companies in Romania, we thought about creating something serious on this sector. And of course, we invite the foreign companies to join because they know more than us. That's true. You saw the figures. They have thousands of projects. We want to collaborate with them, OK? And also, a market has to be open because not only we will receive, but we will also give, OK? In Southeastern Europe, Romania can become the leading power in order in the following two or three years to give ideas to Serbia, to Bulgaria, to other countries as well. So this comes from a Romanian, let's call it like that, initiative. But of course, we already have members that are from abroad. Okay, thank you. Uh, exactly. Uh, so maybe you wanted or? to have yes. uh, some names, some examples of the members. Right now, we are preparing in two, three weeks to have a press conference regarding this issue. And I will give everything there. And also, I will be happy to talk to you to discuss about uh, companies, etc. But I'm not here to advertise that it's this or that. We, all, the na all the names officially we will have in June when we have the like, inauguration. We will present everyone there. But for us, it's not only about the company. As I told you, we want in the association authorities, universities, also companies, municipalities, chambers of commerce, biogas and biomass, something very dynamic. It includes the whole society. If we don't have the universities with us, we are nothing. For, we, don't, we don't have reason to do it because they have the knowledge. And as you heard, they already have examples. So we have to learn by them and also to ask them to join. Because a foreigner who will come in Romania and say, I want to invest, and he will ask, tell me some people who know, we will take him to the university and the, the, there are people who know them. That's the approach. All the parts, or not only companies. It's not just about to have 20, 50 companies. It's good. But it's not just to have the companies. Okay, thank you. To become How many biocars plant are there? Right now, if I'm not wrong, there are two and there are another four under construction. Where? Where? I can give you afterwards information and the map. One in Buzau, if I'm not wrong. One in, uh, I'm not, I don't remember the Brasov. village of the other, in Brasov, in, Bra in Brasov you have, there is another one, but there are few projects. Yes. But we have only one make profit. Profit have all of them, both of them, of biogas and also real, the biomass. Real, not Sorry? Real profit. Real profit not means not what exactly profit. for you? For me, profit means that when this investor invested 100 euro, once he is working his investment and he is producing energy, at the end of the year, with all the expenses paid, he has 15 euro profit. So this means that in six, seven years' time, he will gain back his investment. So this happens already in Romania now. On my opinion, there are more, for example, only in Timisoara, the brewery has its own biogas factory. Smithfield has its own uh, biogas factory. So this means that we have to be be better educated regarding the project. Yes, but, but they, these they are do not uh, receive small. They don't receive certificates. That's why no, I don't no. know. No, no. They, they produce for their own, own, okay. their own energy. We will go to them as well. But I give you an example. I know a specific small milk factory with a very small installation of biogas that from since the moment that they installed it, and by taking advantage of it, they have doubled their sales. And they are selling a bit less than they used to sell, and they have a much bigger profit. So there will be things happening exactly because we will make it bankable. To be 
member of your association means uh, paying your tax? Uh, how, how do you support yourself? Tax, tax is, a, is a word that, has to, that is related okay, to the state. Uh, Yes. So, uh, the, for the companies and the private people, there is an annual fee to be paid, yes. and for authorities, there is not an annual fee to be paid. They can, they will join. For universities? Of course, they don't pay. Universities do not pay. Okay. So, universities do not have to. They will not earn money from this, correct? So, they don't have to pay. Companies and other investors that who will have profit out of this, they will pay. That's the idea. But I told you again, we want municipalities, universities, we want them with us, okay? We don't want to be just ourselves and to say, I am the president. I have these companies, we are very big, we have a lot of money. No. Universities and all the other people will give us the essence and the substance. Because, for example, there are other associations in several sectors that they are just few companies and they don't really have connection to the society. This is not our intention. So you don't have a, 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 let's say, a project from where you are taking money because I told you the annual fees from the members, <laughs> and also we will create, we, have, we will have several events. It's enough. We don't want to make a profit. <laughs> yeah, it's a non-profit organization after all. <laughs> okay. Do you have some other questions? No. Comments? No. It was a very interesting uh, morning session. Uh, uh, Mrs. Andrea Yanko, she showed up.